Hey guys, Colton here with Cypher Data Solutions. Last video we talked about Azure Purview and how to set up classifications and scan rule sets to add custom groups of classifications to your scans. Um, and today I wanted to jump back into setting up some data sources and look at what it's gonna take to scan some on-premise SQL servers. Um, so in order to do that, we're gonna need to set up something called the integration runtime, or actually I guess it's self-hosted integration runtime. So if you go ahead and open up Azure Purview um, and go into Management Center, you'll see under the general, there's the integration runtimes. And let's go ahead and click on new, and we're gonna set up a new one. What this does is it allows Azure to connect to your on-premise network and scan your on-premise SQL servers without having to open up a port between, um, between the cloud and your on-premise network um, without having to open up the firewall there. Um, and so you might see this also in, if you have any Azure Data Factory um, set up, you'll, it uses the same integration runtime but you'll actually need to set up a new self-hosted integration runtime just for purview. Um, you can't share the runtimes between Data Factory and purview. Um, but so self-hosted is the only option we have, so go ahead and click continue. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, um, you're gonna give this a name. I would suggest naming it whatever computer you, you are going to install this on. I just named mine server one because uh, I'm just going to be installing it locally on my on my computer. Um, now, if you don't have the installation media yet, it gives you the link there. It just takes you to the download page. You can download it. Um, and then we're going to need to copy one of these two keys, um, but we'll just hold on to that for a second. Now, I've already downloaded the, the installation media. Uh, so right here, my downloads. Going to be installing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward process. There's not a lot to it, um, but I just kind of want to explain some of the some of the options we have here. All right, so let's go ahead and install this. Accept the license terms. So the place to install it, and click install. All right, now sh this should only take a few minutes. Okay, and we're done. So we'll click finish. It'll go ahead and launch the integration runtime setup app. And so now what we're gonna need to do is it's asking for our authentication key. So you need to just come over here and grab just in either one of these will work and then just paste it in there. Um, now you can set the proxy if you want. Um, I don't have one set up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click register. All right, and then so you can name this. Um, so I'm just gonna call it server one. Now enable remote access from intranet. What this does is it allows you to communicate um, from node to node in your integration runtimes. So integration runtime has the option to set up multiple installations and then it'll work like a cluster and it'll use it in a high availability capacity. Um, so today we're just going to be installing one, but like I said, you can go in and install up to four different installations and that way it'll use whichever one is available. All right. I don't want to take a backup right now because it's, it's empty. and this should only take a minute. Okay, so it's done setting up. So let's go ahead and launch the configuration manager. 
And so here's where we're gonna go in and set up the, the connection, or at least test the connection to make sure that we can hit our on-premise SQL Server. All right, so I've got a SQL Express instance running here and with an AdventureWorks DW 2019 database. Um, we're just gonna use basic authentication. All right, and then so this took me a little while to figure out, so learn from my mistakes. It looks like they have an issue with the application where it doesn't properly escape user inputted escape sequences. So you're gonna to wanna to double up that, um, that backslash for now um, until they fix this. And then you see we got the green arrow, so that'll work. Now, whenever you click view logs, it does actually log this information in the event viewer. Um, under applications and services logs, there's connectors integration runtime um, so it has, it does have built in logging into the event viewer. So keep that in mind if you ever have to come in and troubleshoot anything. All right. And then likewise, if we go in and look at our services, you can see that it created two different services now. Um, so if we come down to the integration runtime service, it's got one window service that's actually for the integration runtime and then another service for the updating. All right, and so that's it. We can go ahead and close out of that. Go ahead and go back to our Purview Studio. Click close here and we should be up and running. We should be good. So let's go ahead and go to our sources and so now we're gonna try to register a new SQL connection. And this time we wanna go over to the database and go to SQL Server. Um, notice it's not anything with Azure in the name, it's the one that's just called SQL Server. Um, all right, and let me grab the server name there. All right, we're gonna register it. All right, now let's see if we can scan it. Works, DW 2019. All right, we have to choose what integration runtime we're gonna be using. AdventureWorks, DW 2019. All right, and so now in order to connect to our on-premise server, um, we're going to need to set up a new credential. Um, right now it's only supported with SQL authentication. I'm not sure if they plan on integrating, um, like Azure AD in there, but for now we'll just use the, the SQL authentication user that I used earlier to test with. Um, and here we want to actually set up a connection to our key vault and store the password inside the key vault. Um, so I only have one key vault set up in my tenant. So you, you just go in here, choose what subscription you want to use, choose the key vault name. Um, and then you have to go in and actually grant permissions inside of your key vault to the purview managed identity. Right, so we're going to add role assignment. All right, and this is going to be a reader, and this is our purview Cyber Data Solutions purview. All right, so click save. We should be able to come back over here. All right, so now we have the connection to our key vault set up. Now we need to actually add a secret to the key vault. So if we come back in our Azure portal, 
We're going to go to secrets and we're going to generate a new secret. All right, this name is going to be Colton SQL user password. Colton SQL user password. All right, and the secret, y'all aren't allowed to know. Um, all right, and then click create. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this real quick. So I can come over here, paste that. All right, so now let's set up, let's test our connection, see if it works. All right, great. So we, we connected successfully. Let's go ahead and continue on with setting up our scan. All right, so let's go ahead and, and log everything. All right, now notice here that it does not have that custom cipher scan rule set that we created in the last video. It's because if you remember, I showed you that it was tagged as only an Azure SQL database scan rule set. Um, and here we're scanning a SQL server, which Purview uh, treats as two different items. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new scan rule set just so that way we have that same um, that same scan rule set as before. All right, and here's where we want to turn off most of the government and pretty much only show the country region and the US based ones along with the world cities. And then also add our custom account number. All right, so we can create that. All right, let's, let's use that rule set. And I just want to go ahead and trigger it now. Let's continue, save and run. All right, so we can go in and check the scan and it's completed. So let's go ahead and go look at our assets and just kind of look around, see what happened. Um, so again, notice the SQL server is completely separate from the Azure SQL databases and the Azure SQL server. Um, so we can come in here, you know, it picked up the server. Um, looks, it's looking good. Yep, and it's got all of our, our data in here all of our metadata, and that's it. That's how you set up a on-premise SQL Server to be scanned by your Azure Purview account. Um, so we had to set up a self-hosted integration runtime, which I actually forgot to mention earlier, it doesn't have to be on your local SQL Server. I just did that in my scenario, just because I've got a very simple environment to create these videos, but you can set this up on a web server or an app server that way you're not taking up the, the installation, the processing power on your actual SQL servers. Um, so we did that, set up the integration runtime, and then we just added it as a scan like normal. But that's all I have for you today. Be sure to give the video a like and come back next week. We're gonna be talking about the insights inside of Azure Purview, all the things that you need to be monitoring and how you can just check to see how your Purview instance is performing. All right, thanks guys, have a good one.